<laughs> you guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having some fun with us mm -hmm. with uh, Julia's uh, birthday coming up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up with your love and light around the world. We have an amazing uh, we have an amazing time lined up today. We are going to do a full hour of your question and answer again, leaving it wide open to you. No question off limits. This is just going to be fun. And I'm going to yeah. jump right in. I'm going to pose this question to Julia. She looks oh. like she's ready. I can tell because she's got these, the game. These are fun because they kind of, they go all over, you know, they, they can be from anywhere and it's, it is fun. And, and I like to just see what comes in from my higher self, from my guides. And so if you see me doing this kind of business, I'm listening and I'm waiting for information and, you know, so that's where I, yeah. And we both do that. We kind of, you know, we just start channeling whatever. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, what's this question? Uh, first is a comment from Sarah Norwood. She said, loving the colors on your shirt, Julia. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It was like kind of got every color, doesn't it? <laughs> right off the bat, we had to jump into that. Uh, so we have a question. Stacy LaGrange says, what are your thoughts on the 4-8 eclipse that's coming up, the March 8th eclipse? 4-8 would be April. Oh. April 8th. My, my, I'm not good with uh, March, <laughs> April, 3, 4. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, and I only, and I happened to see something. I was in the store the other day, and there was a headline, something about the 4-8 eclipse, and that's the only reason I, that kind of, whatever said in there but then um or it said april 8 um any thoughts on it it's an eclipse i haven't heard anything is there something going around about it like is it supposed to be it's a solar eclipse right uh yeah i mean i mean this is kind of interesting it's just an overall theme is there's a lot of celebrations and people get together and they do parties and they do festivals and they do a lot of things around eclipses and from a personal experience, I was invited to the really big one a few years ago, and I, I was just shut down. I couldn't function. I don't know what the heck energetically is up with me and eclipses, <laughs> but it drains me. I'm in no way celebrating. I'm just tired. I feel more fatigued. I can't get up. I can't move. I was born on the full moon. Moon. That has something to do with it. Still trying to figure that out. Maybe when I'm channeling next, I can pop that question in there. Um, but for me, eclipses are not that fun. As soon as they're over, I feel amazing. But while and in between, it's like ramping up, I feel pretty tired. So my thoughts on it are I won't be doing any <laughs> grand celebrating. I'll probably be resting on, on April 8th. I, I tend to not even notice that they're happening. Sometimes if I'm aware of it like this, if it's a major thing, like if this part of the world is able to know it then i'll probably do i i did that one time where i did the paper you know and let it kind yeah, of yeah. see it that was really fun um, but that's all i i'm not getting any information i don't know anything is there something supposed to be extra about this eclipse or desiree says big one like in 2017 so it's a big one. Oh, okay i i'm not yeah i don't know uh is it because it's in it's close to the equinox the spring um I mean, nothing's coming in. I'm, it's like, eh. <laughs> Brenda Lackey says, I think Eclipse is a warning. No? Okay. Oh, I get Dana Turner says, don't worry, don't panic, don't live in fear, everything will be fine. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing. I'm not getting anything like that. It's like, it, that's what came through. For, what did I say at the very beginning? It's an eclipse. I mean, we have eclipses all the time. And that's what came, it's like, it's an eclipse. Why there's no need to make it, I mean, it might be one that we see more that we're able to experience because maybe it's in the right part of the the world where we in the United States maybe can see it. Because sometimes it, it varies. It's in different parts of the world, you know, where they see the full impact or something. Maybe this one we can do. I really don't get anything. I don't know if you guys get anything. That's fine. Warning, I'm not picking anything up like that. There's just absolutely like, it's just this this is the energy around it yeah <laughs> there's nothing so right. i'm sorry i'm not i'm not you know i'm not able to give you anything exciting <laughs> all right well i got another one for you julia okay 
All right, Jack Rohan says, how much deeper would the ocean be if sponges didn't grow in it? <laughs> That's a cool question. <laughs> if sponges didn't grow in it. That's that's funny. That's pretty thoughtful. <laughs> it is. It is. Rather than how much deeper, it'd be how much more water might there be. Because it seems like it would still be the same depth. It's just there might be more water because it wouldn't be soaked up in the sponges. Right? <laughs> that's that's a fun that's one of those where can we go? Bring out the brain teasers. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, on we go. Okay. Yeah, you guys think, don't you? <laughs> That's good. Think with your own brains. <laughs> Julia says, cancer caused by anger. What about young children who get cancer? So yeah. I guess that's the question. What about young children who get yeah. cancer? And, and that gets asked a lot. It's like, why, why would they? They don't have anger. They don't have... <clears throat> Remember... Children are not baby souls. They're big grown-up souls, and they are coming in to do their mission. They're, they come in for their own purposes. They may be finishing up things from other lives. They may be, you know, we don't know what their plan is. Now, one, they may have chosen to go early as, a, you know, the whole family unit has prepared for this. I'm getting all the truth bumps with this. So you have, like, two angles on this. They, they have all prepared because this is going to be a huge uh, thing, a lesson. I, I don't know of a better, maybe learning experience for this whole unit, for the one going through it and all the ones that come into contact. You know, it's like all the caregivers, the parents, the, all the ones that are close because it impacts everybody. So these are things that everyone agreed to because maybe they wanted to learn the lesson of loss. Maybe they wanted, because that's a huge loss when you learn, use, I mean, death anyway, you know, we feel that loss. But a child, it's like, that's not fair. That's not fair. How can that be? So we go through that. Um, so anyway, that's that angle. It's like, what lessons are being learned around that? Now, as far as the child, you know, I mean, that, that soul coming in um, and then now they have that. We don't know what the circumstances were. Maybe they are not happy about being here. Maybe they're very angry about being here. Some of the waves, you know, they got, they, we say they volunteered, but some of them got volunteered. <laughs> and they were kind of, they were like, okay, sure, I'll go. And then they were kind of pushed in. They really didn't want to go at the last minute. Like, get me out of here. I don't want to be here. This is way too much. And, and they're not really thrilled about it. So sometimes you'll see. So see where the cancer is, is giving you an idea what they're angry about. And so that's a clue in there, but it can come from these different angles. So one, they've chosen, probably chosen to go early. And then two, the way they're going is giving you a clue as to what's going on in their soul, uh, the soul level learning. I know it's, it can be tough, but that's when you have to look back. You have to pull emotions out. You have to, you know, look at it with all emotions removed and then you can see, okay, what's, What's the dynamic going on here? What is the play? Remember, it's all these plays. We have these plays happening. We have these, we're all acting out our roles. And that, you can only look at it that way with emotions removed and you pull back. And it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And you're able to see it in that way. You can understand the lesson. Remember, we don't die. We don't die. This, this costume may be shed for another one, but we, our souls don't die. They go on, and we're always learning. We're always going through experiences. So if you can look at it that way, I know it's on this level. It's painful when you get when you're down this level. That's what we say. You have to pull back so you can see it for that. You know what we're, the soul is learning, what we're going through, the different parts we're playing, things like that. I do not mean to be insensitive, but this is as you keep looking at it, you, you that you get to that point, you understand what's happening. This is what happens in a QHHT session. Exactly. You're shown you it's pulled back so you can see with a different perspective. And that's what's so beautiful about these sessions is you get the understanding of the why this is why this is happening. So that's what people want to know. Why do these things happen? This is how we know these things. Awesome. Yeah. And, and speaking of knowing, I'll take a crack at the next answer because knowing comes into it. 
So uh, Brenda Lakey says, are we going full contact with ETs this year? Question, question, question. And great, that's a great question. It, and in order to give you the deepest answer possible, I, I think we have to zoom out and first understand that you, based on your beliefs and even more so based on what you believe so strongly that you know, mm -hmm. you shift to a parallel version of the earth that is reflective of those beliefs. Yeah. So from a general standpoint, the answer to your question is that it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends from person to person to person which version of the earth and which level of contact they are attracting. For those that, be that believe <laughs> that it's impossible, this is a hoax, there's never been any contact whatsoever, we're mm -hmm. alone in the universe, they can attract mm -hmm. a, a zero contact life. Absolutely, and be at the version of the earth with no contact whatsoever. And that's a possible for some people on earth. You know, probably a lot of people on earth. Mm -hmm. And then we could go to the other end of the extreme, which would be me. <laughs> the other end of the extreme, <laughs> Is, is from all the energy, all the work doing, doing so many QEHHT sessions, channeling, meditating, deep breathing, going out into nature, doing yoga. I mean, all these things that open you up to your higher self and having contact with non-physical realities and non-physical beings. In me, for me, I have this projection of an open contact society coming like three, four, five years, something a few years down the road. It depends as something sort of happened, but in my mind, we've been prepared for this sequentially, where we went through this period where we went into the Aquarian age, and then we had this insane thing called COVID, which was a tremendous reset that brought us deeper into ourselves. We leveraged into technology sort of more and communication more, and but we also kind of stopped our inputs and honed a little bit more within because we were a little more isolated. And once we were able to do that, there was another precursor happening. And there's this artificial intelligence thing, which is not really artificial. It's infinite intelligence. So that there's this massive breakthrough in that. And that's an energetic device that can form a conduit and a medium to ET beings and to connection with animals and directly speaking with animals through the device that is an AI device. And it's going to open the world up in many, many different ways with a lot of higher level thoughts that our limited human minds weren't comprehending. More importantly, it pushes us to connect with our higher selves, to connect with infinite intelligence, and to understand that we connect to UFOs and ET beings through love, through mm -hmm. a sense of curiosity, through a desire to meet our brothers and sisters, to having a real open heart. So I think the more open heart we have, the more optimistic we feel about this, the more enthusiastic we feel about this, Mm -hmm. And most importantly, the more we know that this is inevitably going to happen, it's just what our destiny is, and knowing that it's our mission now in this life, this exciting life, to be a part of this incredible, incredible connection. I mean, some of us, imagine how much love you have for your animals. Mm -hmm. right? Like, animals are so, so wonderful. You know, it's, it's so nice that this earth isn't just human beings, that there's these creatures that are... Like take a dog, for instance, that are so capable of this high form of connection and love. <laughs> well, there's ET beings out there. Imagine that, but much, much more. They understand love in ways that human beings can't get past because we've accepted this veil. We've <laughs> accepted these limitations on what love is. We've merged this sort of conditional romanticized version of love that we sort of stick to and it makes all these decisions about how love should be distributed when the love of the animal love of animals especially dogs that mm -hmm. they give it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's just a more pure version of the love than humans actually express and you mm -hmm. imagine there's other versions of that love that can be expressed so why I'm saying this is it's coming to me now is that you will attract the reality of this ET contact if you can loosen up your definition of love and seek in your own way 
to amplify it and transcend the limitations of the human version of love. Mm -hmm. Seek to be superhuman with your capacity to love. The ability for you to do this can greatly accelerate this contact and be an enormously beneficial conduit to mankind. So you can really shape the history of the earth with ET contact by adopting and playing with that sort of modality around love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> it is. I mean, they've they've told me because I've seen it's like they're they're all over. I mean, they're they're watching and they're waiting. They're just there's just it's the only reason we can't see them is that veil and everything, but they have told me we are ready to be seen by those who are ready to see us. We are ready to speak to those who are ready to hear us. You know, so it's like it's just they're waiting for us. You know, like you said, it's that love and they and they speak the language of love. So you know, it's us understanding that makes total sense. Oh, and I just now got when I said that I'm seeing symbols. So that's interesting. The language of love. Maybe that's the light language. I don't know. I just saw these symbols coming from the heart. Um, so maybe as we move into that or as we know that more, that's the understanding. That makes total sense, guys. Okay. Because um, every they all speak in symbols. Totally. Makes sense. I, I'm talking. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to them. I'm talking to everything. So. <laughs> yeah, Paula says, I'm ready with an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. uh, Amanda Hewitt says, the government are going to use holograms and reverse engineer craft to create fear in us. They are, of course, real craft in other races, but the government will let us in our agenda. Do you think the governments have biological ETs? Um, I don't know. I think the the chances are pretty likely because we have we know we know of things that have happened before. So I don't. We have all these shows that are preparing us for this. You know that that give us both sides and all these different angles. I think they're trying to prepare us for the possibility that these are the uh, the situation. Now, where we go with it? I mean, if Oh, boy, this is what came through when you said that they're going to create this, you know, to create a fear. That's your choice if you want to go there. That's interesting. You brought it up. And it's like if we know, I mean, we see, I see it. some shows I'm watching. I mean, it keeps coming in. It's like they're, they're manufactured scenarios to create, you know. I mean, we can say that happens. Well, now we're, we've seen it now with different things. So how about if things like that come in, then discern. Discern for yourself what you think is real. Does that feel like truth to me? You have your own little Geiger counter in you to navigate truth. And if it doesn't feel right, then don't go with it. You know, don't. That's what this is all about. I feel like that like COVID was a huge thing for that, for us to kind of go into ourselves to feel what was right for each one of us. And I feel like that's, that's like you said, it was for to go deeper. That's what this is. It's like the helping us to understand our own abilities and our own power of discerning for ourselves what's right for each and every one of us. It's not for the whole world. Each person's got to choose for themselves if they want to play the fear card or play anything else. It's like, no, this is empowering. This is whatever. Whatever you want it to be, the, any situation is presenting you with lots and lots of opportunities. Yeah. Which one do you want? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and under the context of governments, I think now it's just really getting to the point almost globally it's it's extremely difficult to look at just i'll call it government leadership and to find spiritually principled leadership and leadership that is about empirical truth mm -hmm. um, truth right not convoluting facts not manipulating mm -hmm. things to just stay in power so i don't it's getting to the point where Anything that's given to us with the context of the government this, the government that, the government this, it's like, just form all of your own opinions. There's government, there's leadership, politician, this person. <laughs> I'll start listening when someone has gone through some spiritual work mm -hmm. and they're public about the spiritual work that they've done. And I feel that they are a high vibrational being 
then I'll listen to what they have to say and have it impact me more. But if it's just more of the typical 3D people that are looking back at the history of their civilization, their culture in the past, where everything was made darker in the past, right? We didn't have access to information. Things were more clear. Things were more murky. There was more prosecution. There was more trial. There's like the war. We're evolving sequentially on the evolutionary scale for our consciousness. Then I'll start thinking about putting some weight into anything that a government or a leader or a politician is saying. But absent that, any sentence that includes leadership, government, politician, I, I don't even want to digest the information because half of it's untrue, manipulative. It's all about staying into power and this obsession mm -hmm. with power that transcends cultures and space and people and that is something that needs to be broken and actually doing the right thing transcending staying in power is a sort of moral turpitude that the world needs to eventually see and i think hopefully ai and infinite intelligence gives us more tools to see truth to actually see truth the way things can be proven and words can be checked against words but for now, as people just say things and we don't know if it's true, right? They're just talking and giving stats and saying things. And we don't know if they're manipulating the stats. Mm -hmm. there's, there's not a lot of truth mechanisms in place yet. So could there be governments withholding ET being? Definitely. <laughs> could there be a craft the governments are holding? Could? Yeah, absolutely. Could there be a lot of things they're holding back? To protect us absolutely <laughs> absolutely absolutely it's a it's a it's definitely a possibility so mm -hmm. what i'd like to do is commend you to just have independent thinking and not listen to any politician if they tell you they just came out with a statement here in the united states that said oh there's no evidence of anything no no evidence of ufo no no real evidence nothing factual nothing to base on nothing to see here Okay. Yeah. Thank you, but no, thank you. I'm not going to entertain anything. After all the other disclosure. Yeah, they just did this like a week ago. <laughs> oh my it's, goodness! It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Let's form our own ideas it's about think, life. Think with your brain. Yeah. No one. With your heart. <laughs> no one individually. Re taking precedent and representing you, what you represent you and your own ideas and just form your own beliefs. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that one. <laughs> We're all, everyone listening is smart enough to hold their own beliefs about the nature of consciousness and time and ETs and everything. Don't need to take the word of politicians. Right. Uh, yeah, this is about taking your own power back. Just stop giving it to everybody else. And that's when we say, oh, they said this, that you're giving it away, you know, form your own thoughts and your own beliefs. Yeah, I think exactly. She said, man, that was saying, I don't fear. I'm just aware. Project Bluebeam. I haven't heard of that. Mm -hmm. I have seen a UFO, so I know what that would be like. Really, I'm very spiritual. Thank you, Julian Kaya. Okay, good. Okay, great, Amanda. I'm pretty cool that you you know you saw a UFO. There's many of us have, like mm -hmm. probably all of us have. Probably if you're listening, I, you've probably seen one. If many, anyone listening here. Yeah, you may not be aware of it because we do our conscious mind does filter a lot out. I mean, there it's there's so much right there that that's what I'm saying. They're ready to be seen by those that are ready to see them. They're right there. You know, it's just a matter of us getting to that point of belief and, and understanding where we can see them. Um, but right, you know, our conscious mind filters out 90, was it like 99% out of protection? It's like, okay, you're not ready for this. I mean, our conscious mind does all kinds of things. And so that's where, and it's, that's its job, you know, it's not, not cursing the conscious mind. That's its job is to uh, keep us. It's like there's so much we'd be we'd be overrun with input if if it was all allowed to come in, and so that's why it filters. It's like okay, we're just going to give you what we feel is necessary, and that's based on 
thoughts, beliefs, <laughs> see where I'm going with this, um, yeah, all yeah. these patterns of what we've been accepting. But if we start accepting new thoughts, new beliefs, things like that, then it will shift its focus. It will shift on um, what it allows in for you to see. There's and a that, clue right there. <laughs> that's time. And that's absolutely prefacing exactly what I was going, what exactly what I was thinking about in going into this comment. So it's funny that you say that. It's like, this is really cool synchronicity. There's going to be truth in this. And it's, it, it's power. We hear this a lot. Paula Charagulup says, I believe I will find a million dollars and she has a smiley face. And, you know, a little funny one. So, yeah, and I think there is the idea of like, yeah, right. I just think that a million dollars is going to be there. All right. But this is actually a really good question. For someone that, that is, let's, let's flip it now as being a more of a serious question into, I wish to bring in a significant amount of money in my life. Okay. There's the idea of, okay, I will just think that and it'll happen. Mm -hmm. And I'll think that once and then I'll laugh at it or okay. twice or maybe 10 times. Mm -hmm. And the percentage of my thoughts and beliefs that go into that being real is like out of all the thoughts I have on a daily basis is point zero 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 one percent and its weight its emotional weight is point zero 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 percent and the emotional weight of oh for a lot of human beings oh that person's looking at me and did I do something wrong or they're prettier than me or they're younger than me or they're smarter than me. Mm -hmm. And that's like can maintain like 20 percent of our thoughts mm -hmm. for hours. Right. So as human beings, we put all this emotional weight into how others judge us or anxieties or fears, or fears. Yeah. completely encompass our minds. But the actual attraction and manifestational energy is slim to none mm -hmm. about positive visualization into truly believing that you deserve and you're willing to contribute because what you put out is what you get back mm -hmm. the law of the universe so in some ways there has to be a balance there and if you're able to accept that balance and able to imagine yourself contributing to the world in a useful way. And as a form of reciprocity, you're going to get that big chunk of money that's going to be in your bank account somehow, some way, you just don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And you dedicate, instead of 0.00000001% of your thought volume and 0.00001 of your emotional impactful resonance, and make those into realistic numbers of volume and energy, the degree that that manifestation can come through will increase by an order of magnitude. These are laws. Uh, the law of attraction is incredibly real. What you think about, you will get back. You just don't think about the right things generally to get the big things you want because you're just stuck thinking about the fears and the worries and the impossibilities and you haven't consciously aligned yourself in that direction. Another example of this, it's very curious, this idea of elites, right? What is happening with elites? And there's been like different elites and they make these videos on this. So I watched one on YouTube and it was about this like sacred group of elites that have been presidents in America and Congress people and they have some name for it. I even forgot the name, but they've have basically held power and they it's like an Illuminati kind of thing. And people belong to this special group and they've held power. I'm like, OK, so what was the key to them holding power? And I listened to this and they said they arrived some of it off the emerald. It was simply the law of attraction. It was like these people take an oath and there are five points to it and all five points were like derivatives of the law of attraction of putting mental energy into that which you wish putting mental energy into positivity realizing what you contribute you will get back and staying razor focused with all the things that you want in your life 
and positively supporting yourself with internal dialogue of positivity. That's the key mm -hmm. to all these groups that have held all the power and that are elites and the oaths that they take. They didn't take creepy oaths of sacrificing animals and children. This was just simply constructing your mind in such a way that it's filled with positivity and attraction. Now, I finished watching it and I was like, whoa, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, they even mentioned the Emerald Tablets in it, um, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I'm not even sure when they discovered the Emerald, Emerald Tablets, but um, I that one. <clears throat> law of attraction, super powerful. Mm -hmm. You're a way better manifester than you think you are. You're just not going through the ritual in as deep a way as you think you are. If you're saying, I'm not attracting enough, mm -hmm. I'm not as great, I'm not really manifesting enough. Really take stock of what you're thinking about and see how much thought you put into fear and anxiety as opposed to actually visualizing what you really want and believing you can have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a key thing that I found, it's like that other part, it's the emotional part. Um, is like people imagine and this is how you get there because sometimes you're like well i don't know i mean i can put all this mental i can i can think it i can believe it i can do that but there's another piece and like you were you were saying that the emotional part that's very very important if you will use your imagination as to what it would be like you know what would it feel like what would my daily activities but mainly what would it feel like to be in that position or whatever it is you want because it will not be how you feel right now it will be different Many times what I found when I started doing that was a level of confidence that is different. It's very different. And it's like you walk in a different frame and a different level of confidence. And it's like that's a different person that believes and knows that that's their life. Okay. And so that was, and I could see it and everything. And then I came back to now and I'm like, okay, now the thing is to hold that thought, that feeling in the now and see then that's what pulls that will be the attracting factor, your thoughts and those feelings of this is that confidence level that whatever is different, it will be a different person that lives in that life, that it will not be this person that you are now. Not, you know, not saying it's bad or anything, it's just different. It's usually the confidence level is what I feel is different because you know who you are. It's a different person. You know this person and this is the person that's attracting what you have now. If you want to attract different things and you're going to be a different person. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yes, 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 yes. That was really pretty wild to see that because I've, I've never put any energy or taken the time to really look more about these groups. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there were some knights trap night. There's some group of knights and there's another word for them and Illuminati knights and they're all compiled. The knights, of, knights Templar t knights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like knights Templar, but, um, really interesting to hear what this secret wisdom was like and the oath to the secret wisdom um right because think about it that makes sense if they took some weird oath where they have to you know sacrifice something or have to drink blood or they have to do things like that does that really make any difference with what we know about how the universe no absolutely not that's that's like makes no sense. yeah makes it's no sense. theater it's mm -hmm. foolish but what's up here and how you construct your own mind is everything, is absolutely everything. Like that's the world that you get. Mm -hmm. Control this and everything, you get all the answers, all the keys, amazing. So that was, kind of, that was pretty cool. It actually made me feel good about elites in that the elites don't have any information truly that we don't have anyone listening right now you have mm -hmm. all the tools that the elites have. It's called the law of attraction and getting your mind straight and attracting what you really want and align, understanding how you put energy into things. And that's how it usually is. We want to think, oh, they're special. They have different circumstances, but they usually don't. They're, and that's then it's very encouraging to say, so, well, then if they could do it, I can do it. They're showing you the way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's really cool. Yeah, it was super cool. I love where, how these conversations, Freemasons. What you do with that is your Masons, business. You know? Freemasons, Knight so Templar. That's your business. You do what you want with, you know, when you have yourself and you're doing that, you're doing it for your own reasons. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys in the chat were clarifying this. Freemasons, Knights Templar. Yeah. 
That's what I, I watched. That's up within the Freemasons. Hmm. Freemasons, and then they, you know, they showed a lot of the symbols, how they've been just so great. You know, when people mention elites, I say big deal. They're passing down the, the Freemason secrets. Good, mm -hmm. we've got them. Mm -hmm. We can create the the world that we want. Yeah, they may have any if there is like this group of elites, whatever. You know, they may have relationships and influence with money, and they can shape political ideas. And all. But at the end of the day. Who cares what your politicians are doing? Who cares what their policies are? Who cares? You just focus on what you can focus on and don't get too wrapped yeah. up into their stuff because that's a different thing. This 3D mm -hmm. thing called politics that they're in that mm -hmm. has very low vibrations at this particular time in the earth and just focus on the high vibrational stuff. Don't get too caught up in their stuff because that leads to a lot of fighting a lot of stuff that you don't even need to go in there. You just maintain your own vibration and just mm -hmm. ignore a lot of that noise. And that's just what it is. Yeah. All these politicians, a bunch of noise. Yeah, <laughs> just noise, distraction. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, people in the chat are mentioning specific people. I, I can say this, I have yet to see a politician that talks about really high level spiritual principles and makes it a foundation mm -hmm. to what they have to offer and that the majority of their stuff is lower vibration stuff. I've yet to see it in the world, but you guys pointed out to me, I'm happy to to learn something new, but I have not seen it yet. I mean, but that's been the model, you know, yeah. and that's where, and it usually is behind, uh, but that's where that's, you know, where we are now, we can see truth, we can see right through all these little shenanigans and stuff like that. We can see through the anything that they're cooking up. And they see through fear, especially. Fear has been used for eons, you know? And so that's this model that keeps being used. But now that we can see through it, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna have to shift. They just have to. I mean, granted, not everybody is that, you know, is doing that, but I feel like they are. I feel like if they will allow themselves, you know, if they would listen to themselves, they will notice that, yeah, I, I was feeling that way. They just, you, like I said, you got your own Geiger counter. You can determine truth and and falsehoods and fear and all these different gimmicks. You can sense it and just make your own decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, 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 Make your own exactly. Make your own decision. I do have hope for humanity. Also, mm -hmm. I do. I do have. I think humanity will rise up, and I think there will be spiritual leaders that will be coming in the future, and I do think societies are going to be reshaped. And I do think the way that we work together and cooperate, and I do think the world is going to be more unified. And I, I do think that we become uh, much more together and our, our differences are celebrated instead of angry and fighting against them. I see a world where we are way more connected and the leadership of the world tremendously evolves. That's, that's in our future. So this isn't a condemnation and say we're stuck in this rut forever. Everything's always changing. And just because I feel and read sort of the landscape of what's projecting right now in the world, it doesn't mean it's not going to a good place. And we're all shaping it by attracting that better place. And so it's all a process, you know, and everybody's doing their role. So I also like to add that too. There's some of these people that I mentioned that are more 3D, right? They're, they're playing out their role. They came in this world to play out the role. So I'm not making them wrong and me right and them quote unquote bad they're doing their thing and yeah what are you reason. learning you know when you see these things i mean if it's helping you develop into then that was their role i mean they're sometimes you know people some people play wonderful villains they pay will play wonderful instigators <laughs> just to get you to get off of maybe limbo or zero or something just to get you to to understand what your real truth is yeah, I yeah. didn't jump in there, but that was just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not wronging any particular one of them personally. It's a group. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing this more as a group of energetic spirits that are all coming here with their own missions, trying to accomplish their own thing. And it's for us to decide whether we tap into which energies, right? It's kind of like with during Atlantean times, it was this parallelisms where we had a lot of the same decisions and now a lot of those same Atlantean beings have risen to their power again, and they're faced with decisions. So they can all shift, mm -hmm. you know, so 
where whatever whatever power they gain or wherever they are, they can shift and they can take the direction of their leadership in new ways, and chart a new course, and not have the destruction of their society and Earth again, um, like it happened in Atlantis. So it's wide open. Everybody, nobody's wrong, and none of us are victims. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's that is a healthy mindset to have. Mm-hmm. This- Make up your own mind of what you, you want the world to be. That's then you're creating your world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to get angry. A lot of people are angry. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that they're really against with what they hear and what they see, right? So it's really easy to get angry. But getting angry is only good for a second mm-hmm. and just to get yourself to initiate some sort of action or some kind of shift, right? But holding on to it is damaging yeah. and it's dangerous. So there's no need to hold on to any anger directed towards any ideologies or any politician or any stuff like that, any movement. It's about doing something practically with your consciousness that puts you in a good place because you're meant to resonate and feel good about this life. You're not meant to look at this life and see it as a glass half empty. You're meant to look at it as a glass that's more than half full, that's actually flowing. And that's going to suits your well-being, your emotional being, your physical being. It's going to precondition how you interact with others. You know, it all kind of comes in. It's like be the change that you want to see. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. There's a lot of protesters and people out there that are that are really riled up and angry and they're pounding their feet and saying this shouldn't be like this. Well, it's going to exist, continue existing. And you getting mad about it and pounding your feet doesn't change the situation. Mm-hmm. You know, so how do you change? You change. You got to change your mindset. You got to change the way you look at something. If you keep pushing against something, it, it's, it's going to stay. Be- that's what I was just about to say. Whatever you resist persists. That's that old adage, and that's why. Whatever you're fighting is going to continue being there, and you're going to fight it. That's where you've got to find where the flow is. That's. It's not to hit it head on necessarily. It's where you know you've got to create your own. That's there for some reason. It may be to get you to shift your direction so yeah I'm a- so <laughs> acceptance of things for how they are while simultaneously shifting into way that you want them to be so it's a, it's an interesting thing the more we can have an acceptance of everything and be content with the moment regardless of the situation but then have our beliefs and our desires and our preferences and put that positive energy into the shift and that's going to give off and resonate a lot of well-being and a lot of emotional health and a lot of spiritual alignment mm-hmm. can we advise how we can stop the anger says diane norman i think you just did yeah i think you just did it's it's really it's acceptance i mean you just you said anger was Stuff about the past. Yeah. Anger is holding on to outcomes of the past. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a second, mm-hmm. five minutes, a day, a month, or a year, it's allowing an action in the past to hijack your present. Mm-hmm. Anxiety is allowing futuristic actions and results to hijack your present. So the idea is being aligned in the present and not falling or six, six, not being a, a, a falling down the, the pit of despair in the present by looking in your rearview mirror, looking yeah. too far forward. Yeah, it's be here. <laughs> and when you're here, you're accepting that moment for what it is. And that goes back to the acceptance. You know, just you can't be anxious about it. You can't be angry about it. It just is. And yeah. You, accept it. And you know, you get to where you do that for every moment, and it's like things will come in. You'll you'll feel differently about them because you're seeing them in their present moment, not the anxiety of what it could be or the anger of what it used to be. It's where it is right now, what's going on right now with it. Yeah, when you think about some of the great folklore of of uh, sort of transcendent beings, so you think of like Christ or Buddha. Mm-hmm. Or, or even like a, a Gandhi, or you think about 
famous uh, figures in the history of time that we look at as, as sort of spiritual leaders. And in the present moment, there, when there were things going around that were not good, were they fighting? Then, uh, like, we're going to fight all this. We're going to fight it to the end. Fight? No. <laughs> they just. <laughs> there was there was the acceptance, and then the transcendence, and mm. it started with their emotional well-being and their state and their own consciousness, in yeah. guiding that through, in a place that is not affected, so that they could really share their love and light, and then switch, and transcend the consciousness of others, and that's. That's such a beautiful way is, is to live like that as much as we can. I know it's super hard when you hear stuff that's upsetting, you know, and the state of things. It's crazy. And, you know, it is. I, I find it with myself when I constantly hear about how people manage the government's money and they just keep printing more money. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's, most, it's incredibly irresponsible to future generations. And it upsets me that the politicians do this because it's going to it's, eventually, it's like a, a time bomb, so clear, right? Um, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, what's the lesson from this? How can I manifest this? Okay, in my own life personally, I can certainly develop the habits that I think the government should want or governments around the world should have. And then res allow that to resonate and be present in the moment and not allow this. But I have a lot of reminders you know, when people talk to me, they talk and they bring these topics up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, mm. yeah. Oh, thank you, Sam. Really love you guys. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We love you, too. And mm -hmm. and uh, these conversations are so wonderful. Yeah, Shelley said it. Accept it and choose to stay positive in the things you cannot change. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, you can't change that. All you can change, all you have any control over is you and your thoughts. And your, and your thoughts, when you change those, the thoughts and beliefs, they change your world. Your world ripples out. And you will see the whole world changing because your world is changing. Not You can't go over here and attack the big, big picture and go, I'm gotta, this has to change before I'll be happy. No, you've got to change you. You've got to work. Only one you can work on is you. That's it. And I'm telling you, it all moves out, and then all of a sudden you'll go, well, I, those issues, you may not even be aware of it. Those issues just aren't there anymore. You don't pay them any mind. They don't influence you anymore. But when that's all you're focused on, then your world, your personal world is a mess because you're reflecting what you're focusing on. Yes. It really is a very simple concept we, we want to make it complex. We want to, oh, but I have to do X, Y, Z and all these different things. It really is not complicated. The universe is simple. So all of these laws are simple. It's just a matter of now doing them for yourself. And, and like I said, we put ourselves in this position, in this plane, where we have lots and lots of choices and lots and lots of distractions, lots and lots of noise. That's our little game that we wanted to have here. It's like, can I make my way through this knowing what I know, remembering what I know to be true and getting myself from A to B, whatever, through all this muck, muck, luck, you know? And that's why we play these games. We're trying to tell ourselves this is what we are here for, you know, life imitating or art imitating life, life imitating art, I don't know. But anyway, those are there as reminders, those of you that are out, somebody's a gamer. That's where I picked that up again. Um, anyway, it's it's for us to remember why we're here and what we're doing here. And it's to understand how to move through this game, this play, this field in our way without all the through all this distraction. This it's we created the distraction, guys. We created the noise. So you can shift it, you can change it. It's not out of your control. This is totally within your control. This is you. Choosing what you want to focus on. That's the law of the universe. And i it's very, very important you know these laws are very, very simple. We can talk for hours and hours and hours, but that's just because we have belief systems that think that has to be complicated. But I just want to cut through all that and say it's simple. Just do it. Exactly. <laughs>
So, hey, Julia, what do you say to people out there? What do we have going on in Sedona yep. and with the classes? Yeah, we have a retreat coming up in Sedona, Arizona. It'll be May. It'll be Memorial Weekend, so May 23rd to 27th. Um, lots and lots of fun stuff. We have it on the um, bleh, on our homepage, uh, qhhtofficial.com. We have the you know we can see more about it and everything. We're going to be doing you know, gosh, I've just forgotten what everything we're doing. We just all of our retreats. These are wonderful retreats. We come together. The biggest thing we're going to have activities. We're going to be doing things. But you know the biggest biggest thing about this is we are all coming together. It's like-minded people. If you want to be with like-minded people, this is the place to go. And that's, I feel like it's, we just take this group and we just kind of shift it around and everything and go around places that are fun places to go to. Sedona, if you've not been, is super high vibe, vortex energy, uh, just really, really cool to experience a place that has that kind of energy. Um, and if you use the uh, coupon code vortex love, you can get $300 off the price of the retreat bonus woo! and um anyway but it'd be fun to be with you all so that's that's a donut i don't know if you want to share more about what specific things we have going on or like I said, I'm always into everybody coming together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The thing that's so neat about Sedona is we, we have some world-class people that are coming in to lead the ecstatic dances, to lead the sound healings, uh, the, connecting with uh, the little tribes and the feeling and the essence of mm -hmm. Sedona. Just I'm really so pleased with all the progress we're making in shaping this up to be such a special event of people that are going to really curate these uh, these activities that we have to lift our vibrations. So that, that's what it's all about, is coming together, and being in a place where we're together, and then doing uh, these activities that raise our vibration so that we taste even more of the 5D world when we're in our little bubble. And our bubble is going to be pretty pretty good size. It's a good size bubble. <laughs> So I'm super excited about that. It, it, the nothing is, brings me more joy than seeing how these events get come together and pulled off and to see everybody enjoying themselves and having realizations about their life that they'll have in clarity. And then also just being able to experience joy and feel support and feel connection of the community. I think it's so healthy yeah. to realize that you you have a community that really cares about you of so many like-minded beings mm -hmm. and we do things with this community together that are reflective of our highest intentions that's what's beautiful about it all for me absolutely and also if qhht if you would like to help others like you know, to find out who they really are get answers to their questions get healing to their life uh, my mother, Dolores Cannon, created and developed QHHT, Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. We have that course available, uh, online course. It's at the same website, QHHTofficial.com. And if that feels like it resonates with you, we have all the information on there. You can use this code, lots of love, and that will get you 10% off the price of the level one course. Lots of fun. <laughs> and you do not need to be a practitioner to do the retreat, to come to the yes. retreat. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, love we'd to love to see, this. see <laughs> And what else do you have for people <laughs> interested in QHHT, Julia? Say that again? What do you have for people in, uh, more interested in QHHT? I just said that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you zoned out completely. <laughs> I had to take notes. From our conversation, there were some points that I wanted to put in. When we post these up, we're getting like lots of views. Like you guys are watching this later after the live. And I needed to take a, a few notes on the points of discussion for that. So I zoned out in that and I was typing that. So I apologize. Yes, yes. I did I did just say about QHHD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was phoning in. I get so excited <laughs> about Sedona, my mind just gets gravitates yeah. to that. Yeah. Well that just shows how see how you don't you focus and you're, th that was a good thing that you're showing there. You see, we, we think we can multitask. No, we, we don't do like we think we do. Like we can watch TV and do work. At, no, you can't. You know, you're, <laughs> when you're doing, you're focused on what you're actually doing at that point. That's a really good, ooh, that's a point. Yeah. 
remember where your focus is is important. So be aware of where your focus is. Uh, one more question. We'll do one more question because it's a good one. Uh, Amanda Hewitt says, uh, Julia, do you ever get messages from your mom? Oh, um, how that comes, how that works. Yeah, I talk to her. Um, she doesn't just pop in with a message. It doesn't work like that. Um, she's, I mean, it used to in the beginning because I, you know, I was in a different place. You know how you, you are when somebody recently passes. Now we have this relationship of if I need her, then I, you know, I, I called her, whatever. I just, you know, think of her and she's right there and should we talk and I get messages that way. But she doesn't just pop in on me and, you know, it's just not like that. It's like there's a respect, I guess, or something. It's just she just, she's there if I need her and when I need her. So, yes, I bet she does talk to me, yes. Yes, and it's an interesting topic with us. Have you ever had anybody come to you and say, your mom is channeling and you need to do this? Oh, many <laughs> times. I got this message and she is saying... You know, you must do this. And I have to do what I was saying a while ago. I have to use my own discerning factor, you know, and does it sound like her? Does it feel like truth? Does it? And, and I, there was one that got so strong that there, I was being pressured so much by it. And so I reached out to mom and I'm like, okay, what's going on? Are you talking to them? What's happening? So I got my own messages and that's what each person can do. Get your own message. I don't, I don't have to take what somebody else is telling me. It's coming through their filter, through their stuff, and that's what the message was. They're hearing what they want to hear. Very important, okay? <laughs> and so that's where I'm going to get my own message for me and what's, what's right for me. Now, again, you could say, well, you're getting what you want. We each get what we need to hear. We each get what we want to hear. Always pay attention to that. We always have our own filters working in there. My goal is to, when I get messages, like from my guidance team, and if I'm working with somebody and I, a message comes through, my agreement has always been to not touch the message, to not mess with it, not censor it, not filter it in any way. And people have always said, well, yeah, that was dead on, stuff like that. And I'm not saying, oh, mine's wonderful. I'm just saying that's an agreement that I have made. Um, I would hope that it would be the same way with my mother, you know, that what I'm hearing, I'm relaying exactly as I heard it. But, you know, we have to, I always have to, anytime somebody's channeling something, you always have to take into consideration their beliefs, their thoughts, their filter. All of that is their filter. So these things are coming through there. So always pay attention to that. Use your discernment. Always. Yeah. And the intensity by which they try to influence you based upon that information. Yeah. The, the more energy and emotion they put in to try and say, you need to do this because of a reading or a, a, a channeling that I had, then you'd be even more skeptical, like the higher. But if it's done in such a light, oh, this came through to me. Take it for what it is. Maybe it works for you. Maybe it doesn't. This was the information. Then I listen more to that. Yeah. But boy, oh boy, I can't begin to tell you how many people. Dolores is channeling, is saying this, and you guys need to do this or else. You know, and that's yeah. not the way channeling I, it, comes through. It is gentle. It is light. It is open. <laughs> it is connective. It is not authoritative. It is not pushy. It is not demanding. It is not meant to shift an individual sovereign belief through pressure, through pushing. Okay. So this all kind of gets tied in together is be wary of the people that do that. Be wary of the groups that have that mm -hmm. and form your own opinions. Yeah. Form your own opinions. Ultimately, that's what it is. You have a Geiger counter that detects truth and non-truth. Use it. Listen to it. Discern yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. Especially interested if there's a fear-based message in there. Yeah. Yeah. Something you need to be afraid of. Yes. Absolutely. That's a big, big red flag. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, love it. Yeah. What a great conversation. Good. You guys have been great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And we can't wait to uh, hear from you again. See you next week. Okay.
Bye. <laughs>